Hey guys, this is JJ with Express Workshops. This week we're going to use Photoshop's HDR Pro to process HDR images inside of Photoshop. Okay, let's get started processing HDR backgrounds in Photoshop. This video is uh, has two purposes. The first purpose is to um, just show how the HDR Pro um, filter, I guess, or plugin inside of Photoshop uh, works to process HDR uh, photographs. And the second is, is, this is going to be the first in a short series of videos that I'm doing uh, to show how to do this particular image. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on processing this background. Uh, we go to File and go down to Automate and then to Merge HDR Pro. This dialog box will come up and I'm looking for files so I'll go ahead and browse for them. And this is the eight photographs that I'm going to use. They have been taken on a tripod and they are about a stop difference in their exposure. So I've got those selected. I'll go ahead and say OK and then OK one more time to bring those, merge those into HDR Pro. Now this process might take just a bit, so we might just go ahead and pause and we'll come back whenever it's done doing its processing. OK, Photoshop has gone ahead and finished uh, processing those uh, different exposures. Now it's just one image here in my large frame. And in this dialog box, uh, there's lots of different ways that you can process this, um, uh, this image. Uh, it's called tone mapping. And basically what I want to do for my purposes is really very easy. I just want to use one of the presets here. And I'm going to probably want this to be as realistic as possible. I just want that dynamic range. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this photorealistic high contrast. And that's going to go ahead and update my photograph. And there's probably a couple things that I want to go ahead and change. Um, it's got kind of a weird glow on there, which is pretty typical of doing HDR uh, images. I really don't want all of that in my photograph. So I'm just going to bump up the radius here and that'll kind of get rid of some of that ghosting, some of that fringing around there. And then the only other thing that I want to do is go ahead and change this exposure a little bit because I want it to be just a little, what's wrong way? I, I want it to be just a little bit lighter and I can go ahead and change the exposure later inside of Photoshop. So. I change the exposure there and maybe just bump a little bit of saturation in it. All right, and that's all I really need to do inside of uh, HDR Pro. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And Photoshop will go ahead and merge those files into um, a file that I can process or edit inside of Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video one more time and then I'll get back when it's done processing. Okay, we're back inside of Photoshop and as you can see it's done a pretty decent job of creating a HDR image here. It, like I said, it's not going to be one that's going to be way out there. I want it to be as close as I possibly can to um, you know, a realistic photograph. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bump up some of the contrast and edit this photograph in such a way that I think it's going to work for the uh, photograph that um, I'm going to need for the composite. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring up some of this shadow area just a little bit. So I'm just going to go to a levels uh, adjustment layer and I'm just looking at that shadow area. I'm just going to bring it up just slightly and then I'm going to go ahead and control I and reverse this mask, this mask, invert this mask, so that um, I can just paint in the area that I want to actually make lighter. So with a brush, 
and that brush set to white, I'm going to go ahead and paint on that mask layer. Just bring some of that shadow area up. So I'm extending the dynamic range of this photograph even further by using levels. All right, so that's good for that. Now I want to go ahead and bring that clouds back down. I want to make the um, exposure on that just a little bit darker. So I'm going to go ahead and get another levels adjustment layer and I'll do just the opposite with that. I'll go ahead and I'm just looking at the sky. So I'm bringing that down there. Then I'll go ahead and invert that mask again and paint it with white in that area to bring that drama into the clouds. And I'm just painting on that layer mask with white. It's a black layer mask so I'm just reversing that color and letting it reveal what that mask is doing. Okay, now the only other thing that I think I want to do with this image at this point is go ahead and get a little more saturation in it. So I'm going to go and get a hue saturation layer and I just want to bump up some of this blue in here. That's kind of what I'm looking at. So I'm going to go to the blues in the photograph and just saturate those really dramatic like and then again I'll go ahead and invert my mask and I'll just paint that part in just those blues I want to get those a little more dramatic and a lot of this background will actually be uh, hidden once I do the composite but I don't know which parts just yet will be hidden so I really got to just process the whole picture. So one more adjustment layer, a hue saturation. I'd like to go ahead and get some a little bit more um, saturation in the grass and the green areas. Now I've kind of just found by um, you know just by experience that if I go to my greens I don't really get the colors that I'm looking for uh, bumped up. It's usually the yellows in the green that I want bumped up. So I'm going to go to the yellows in the photo. I'm going to bump those up pretty good about there. I'm going to go ahead and invert my mask again and then just paint in those yellows in that green grass. Go ahead and get that tree line. And this area over here. So that's just kind of a subtle difference, but that bringing out that yellow makes that green a little more greener, <laughs> if that is a word. So I'll go ahead and show you that before and after. That's the before and that's the after. So just a little more saturation in there. All right. So really all I have to do is just go in and flatten this uh, layer uh, or the layers in here and I will be ready to go ahead and create um, my composite and then merge that with this background. Now we'll show you um, the before and after on the adjustments that I've made inside of Photoshop um, as opposed to what was brought in by HDR Pro. So this is the before and that's the after. So you can see um, that even if uh, you get some kind of flat result inside um, of HDR Pro, then you can actually go in and um, just do your regular editing on there because you've got, you know, you still got a lot of uh, latitude in there to uh, work with with your editing. Okay, so again, this is going to be the first of a short series on uh, a composite that I'm doing. And um, make sure you check that out once I get that taken care of. It's going to be over the next couple weeks that I'll get that out and finished. Um, and uh, make sure you subscribe to my page so that um, whenever my new videos come out, you can get those. Uh, hit that like button and also just uh, keep an eye out for my uh, super quick 
quick tips. Say that three times fast. Um, and I will see you next time with a brand new video. Thanks.